Caesar, Mastermind of the Roman Empire. Prepared and presented by Ashley Brondon. Chapter 1. Introduction. In the pantheon of history's most influential figures, few have been as consequential or as controversial as Gaius Julius Caesar. Born into the turmoil of a republic fraught with political tensions and social inequality, Caesar would rise through the ranks, not only to rule but to redefine the landscape of the known world. The name Caesar is today synonymous with power, leadership, and a brand of ruthless pragmatism that continues to shape our understanding of political authority over two millennia after his death. Julius Caesar was more than a dictator, he was an innovator, an orator, a military genius, and a shrewd political operator. His keen intellect and uncanny understanding of human nature helped him navigate Rome's complicated political landscape and allowed him to manipulate the system in his favor. His accomplishments were vast and varied, impacting various aspects of Roman society, politics, and military strategy. The Roman calendar, the Julian calendar, still forms the basis of our own. His writings on his military campaigns continue to be studied as historical and rhetorical masterpieces. Caesar's influence was not limited to Rome. His conquests expanded the Roman Empire to its greatest extent, from the shores of Britannia to the rich lands of Egypt. Through these exploits, he brought immense wealth to Rome and extended its cultural and political influence across Europe and North Africa. He built bridges, both literal and metaphorical, pushing the boundaries of Roman engineering and diplomacy. His affairs of the heart, particularly with Cleopatra, the enigmatic queen of Egypt, have become the stuff of legend illustrating his personal allure and charisma. Yet, Caesar was not without his critics. His rise to power upset the traditional balances of the Roman Republic. The means by which he seized and maintained control, culminating in his appointment as dictator in perpetuity, alarmed the Roman elite, leading to accusations of tyranny. This tension ultimately led to his infamous assassination on the Ides of March, a pivotal event in world history that marked the death of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. Julius Caesar's life was, in many ways, a paradox. He was a man of the people who became an unassailable dictator, a defender of Rome who was killed by his fellow Romans, a conqueror who ultimately fell victim to his own ambition. Yet, it is perhaps in these contradictions that we find the true intrigue of his character. In this biography, we aim to explore these complexities, to understand the man behind the legend, and to reveal why Julius Caesar remains one of history's most fascinating figures. So, let us journey back to a time when Rome was the center of the world, to the tumultuous streets of the Eternal City, where a young boy named Gaius Julius Caesar was about to embark on a path that would change the course of history forever. His is a tale of ambition, power, betrayal, and legacy. It is the story of a mastermind who built an empire. It is the story of Julius Caesar. Chapter 2. Early Life and Family Born into one of Rome's oldest aristocratic families in 100 BC, Gaius Julius Caesar came of age during a period of seismic change for the Roman Republic. The son of Gaius Julius Caesar and Aurelia Cotta, young Caesar hailed from the patrician class of Roman society, a legacy of privilege and political power that could be traced back to Rome's earliest foundations. Yet, despite his noble bloodline, the Caesars were not as affluent or influential as other patrician families. Their modest means did little to dampen the ambitions of the young Caesar. From an early age, it was clear that Caesar was no ordinary child. Blessed with a sharp intellect and a gift for rhetoric, he exhibited traits that would come to define his later life. His mother, Aurelia, played a crucial role in his upbringing, instilling in him the principles of duty, ambition, and a deep love for Rome. In contrast, his father, although less influential, was a respected figure who served as the governor of Asia, laying the groundwork for the political legacy his son would later inherit. In 84 BC, at just 16 years of age, Caesar experienced a significant turning point in his life, his father's unexpected death. The loss thrust him into the role of head of the family, a mantle he accepted with a maturity that belied his years. But this maturity would be tested sooner than he expected. Later that same year, he entered into an arranged marriage with Cornelia, 
the daughter of a powerful political ally, Lucius Cornelius Cinna. This union would not only serve as a stepping stone to Caesar's political career but would also present him with his first major test of allegiance. At this time, Rome was in the grip of political instability. The traditional balance of power within the Republic was strained by the rise of strongmen, such as Sulla, who sought to consolidate power in the hands of a few. A bloody conflict known as the Social War had divided the ruling class into rival factions, leading to a power struggle that threatened the very fabric of Roman society. The youthful Caesar found himself caught in the middle. His marriage to Cornelia tied him to the faction led by his father-in-law Cinna, while his own patrician heritage made him a natural target for the rising dictator Sulla, who belonged to the rival faction. Despite the perilous political climate, Caesar refused to divorce Cornelia at Sulla's command, displaying a rare defiance that marked his first significant political stand. He paid a hefty price for his defiance, however, with Sulla stripping him of his inheritance, his wife's dowry, and his priesthood. Forced to go into hiding, Caesar became a fugitive in his own city. Yet, even during these dark times, Caesar remained undeterred. His decision to stand by his wife signaled an unwavering loyalty and determination that would come to characterize his political life. Moreover, it was during this period of adversity that he came to understand the harsh realities of Roman politics. The lessons he learned would provide invaluable in the years to come, as he embarked on his journey from patrician youth to the mastermind of the Roman Empire. Chapter 3 Capture and Ransom The year was 75 BC, and Julius Caesar, a young man of noble lineage, not yet marked by the hands of destiny, embarked on a journey that would shape his life and eventually, the course of the world. He sailed across the Aegean Sea, intending to study rhetoric on the island of Rhodes, known for its esteemed philosophers and orators. However, the capricious gods of the sea and luck had other plans. Caesar's voyage was abruptly interrupted when a band of Cilician pirates, a scourge that had long troubled the Mediterranean waters, captured his ship. Recognizing the Roman nobles' value, the pirates demanded a ransom of twenty talents of silver, a substantial fortune at that time. The stage was set for a conventional hostage situation, but Caesar was anything but a conventional hostage. What followed was a remarkable display of audacity, defiance, and charisma that would become Caesar's trademark in the years to come. Instead of pleading for mercy or succumbing to despair, Caesar interacted with his captors with a surprising casualness. He engaged them in intellectual conversations, joined their exercises, recited poetry, and even chastised them when they failed to understand the depth of his verses. However, it was his next move that truly left the pirates flabbergasted. Rather than fearfully agreeing to the pirates' demands, Caesar scoffed at the paltry sum of twenty talents. Displaying an astonishing arrogance or a genius grasp of psychology, he insisted they increase the ransom to fifty talents. The pirates, amused and intrigued by the audacious prisoner, agreed. Caesar's attitude during his captivity set him apart from most hostages. He never ceased to assert his superiority, repeatedly reminding the pirates of his rank and promising them that he would return and crucify them all once he was free. The pirates, misreading his determination for bravado, laughed it off. Eventually, the ransom was paid, and Caesar was released. Yet, unlike most freed captives who would hurry to safety, Caesar was a man of his word. He traveled to the nearby city of Miletus and, leveraging his family's name and the promise of recompense, assembled a small naval force. The men, enticed by the prospect of pirate gold and the charisma of this promising young noble, flocked to his banner. Returning to the pirate's lair, Caesar displayed a keen understanding of military strategy. He launched a surprise attack and successfully captured the pirates, retrieving his ransom in the process. He then brought the pirates to the Roman governor of Asia, Marcus Junius, expecting justice to be swiftly served. Yet, bureaucracy and politics intervened, causing delays in the execution. Undeterred by this setback, Caesar took matters into his own hands. With a disregard for conventional rules that would later characterize his political career, he ordered the pirates to be crucified, thus fulfilling the vow he had made in captivity.
the episode ended with a striking demonstration of Caesar's commitment to justice and retribution. The pirate episode, though a mere blip in the life of a man who would go on to become one of history's most influential figures, is nevertheless emblematic of Caesar's character. His audacity, resilience, ability to command loyalty, and his shrewd tactics, both psychological and military, foreshadowed the extraordinary leader he would become. His return to execute the pirates confirmed his unwavering commitment to his word, his sense of justice, and his determination to carve his destiny. This marked the beginning of the world's acquaintance with Julius Caesar, the man who was not to be underestimated, the man who would stop at nothing to achieve his aims, and the man whose name would eventually become synonymous with power. Little did anyone know that this audacious, defiant young noble would one day hold the reins of the greatest empire the world had ever seen. But that is a tale for another chapter. For now, let us revel in the unexpected, fascinating episode of Caesar's early life that showcased the making of a legend. Chapter 4 Rise in Politics As the sun rose on the Roman Republic in the late 70s BC, a new face emerged on the political horizon, a face that would cast a long shadow over the world's most powerful city. Julius Caesar, having proven his courage and cunning during his capture by the Cilician pirates, now turned his gaze towards a new arena, the cutthroat realm of Roman politics. Caesar's political life commenced in earnest when he was elected as a military tribune around 70 BC. The position was more administrative than military, yet it offered Caesar a unique platform to project his ideas and gain influence. Ever the orator, he used this opportunity to endear himself to the masses, presenting himself as a champion of the common people. Caesar quickly distinguished himself as a populist leader, showing a level of care for the lower classes rarely seen in patrician politicians. The year 63 BC marked a significant milestone in Caesar's political career when he was elected as Pontifex Maximus or chief priest, beating two other influential patricians. The position, although primarily religious, held considerable political sway and was often a stepping stone to higher political office. Caesar's victory in this highly contested election firmly established him as a political heavyweight and set the stage for his subsequent ascent to the highest echelons of Roman power. In 59 BC, Caesar was elected as a consul, one of the two highest offices in the Roman Republic. The consulship was a shared position, and Caesar served alongside Marcus Calpurnius Bibulus, a staunch conservative who frequently clashed with Caesar's progressive ideas. Despite the opposition, Caesar used his year in office to pass an ambitious legislative agenda. His series of laws, known as the Julian Laws, brought about public land reforms, debt relief, and many other policies aimed at addressing the grievances of the common people. These actions, while controversial among the conservative patricians, further endeared Caesar to the masses and cemented his status as a populist leader. During his consulship, Caesar also formed the First Triumvirate, a political alliance with Pompey, a celebrated general, and Crassus, the wealthiest man in Rome. While this triumvirate was fundamentally unstable due to the contrasting ambitions and egos of its members, it served a crucial purpose for Caesar. It allowed him to push through his legislative agenda, bypassing the conservative opposition in the Senate. However, it also planted the seeds of a power struggle that would eventually lead to civil war. Caesar's rapid rise in Roman politics was a testament to his charisma, strategic genius, and an uncanny ability to understand and manipulate the political landscape. Yet, it was also a period of controversy and tension. Caesar's disregard for tradition, his aggressive reforms, and his tendency to sideline the Senate in favor of the popular assembly were viewed as threats to the Republic's balance of power. These actions won him the adoration of the common people, but they also earned him a growing list of enemies among the conservative patrician class. As we close this chapter of Caesar's life, we see a man on the brink of greatness. His audacity and resilience had propelled him from the patrician class to the pinnacle of Roman politics. Yet, the same traits that facilitated his rise also sowed the seeds of discord. Caesar, the audacious young noble who had defied pirates, was now defying the very traditions of the Roman Republic. He was reshaping Rome in his image, setting the stage for a destiny that would forever change the course of history. 
However, as Rome would soon learn, the path to greatness is often fraught with danger and strife. That is a tale for the next chapter. Chapter 5. The Gallic Wars. The year was 58 BC Julius Caesar, a figure already known in Rome for his formidable political maneuvering, was about to launch a military campaign that would etch his name permanently in the annals of military history. As the proconsul of Roman Gaul, a vast territory that stretched from the Mediterranean to the southern borders of present-day France, Caesar found himself facing an imminent threat the migration of the Helvetii, a Celtic tribe from Switzerland, through Roman lands. The stage was set for what we now know as the Gallic Wars. The Helvetii's migration was the spark that ignited Caesar's ambitious military campaign. With deft political maneuvering, he declared the Helvetii's migration a threat to Rome and swiftly moved against them. Employing clever tactics and demonstrating his understanding of topography and logistics, Caesar defeated the Helvetii in a series of battles. The swift victory sent a clear message across Gaul and Rome. Julius Caesar was not just a savvy politician but also a formidable military leader. Emboldened by his success, Caesar turned his attention to the rest of Gaul. For the next few years, he led a relentless campaign against a host of Gallic tribes, subduing them one by one. From the maritime Venedi in the Armorican Peninsula to the fierce Nervii in Belgic Gaul, none could resist the Roman legions might under Caesar's command. During these campaigns, Caesar showcased an audacious approach to warfare, often taking risks that more conservative commanders would avoid. Caesar's military prowess was put to the ultimate test in 52 BC when a charismatic Gallic chieftain, Vercingetorix, rallied many Gallic tribes in a major rebellion against Roman rule. The ensuing conflict culminated in the siege of Elysia, a Gallic stronghold. The Romans, led by Caesar, were vastly outnumbered and trapped between the besieged city and a massive Gallic relief force. Yet, in these desperate circumstances, Caesar's strategic genius shone brightest. He ordered the construction of two concentric rings of fortifications around Elysia. The inner ring kept Vercingetorix and his troops trapped within Elysia, while the outer ring was designed to protect the Romans from the Gallic reinforcements. Despite being surrounded and outnumbered, the Romans held their ground, repelling wave after wave of Gallic attacks. Finally, after a grueling battle, Vercingetorix surrendered, marking a decisive victory for Caesar and effectively ending the Gallic resistance. The conquest of Gaul had far-reaching consequences. It significantly expanded the Roman territory, extended Rome's influence to the Atlantic, and opened up new avenues of trade and resources. The Gallic Wars also propelled Caesar to unprecedented heights of fame and popularity. The wealth accumulated from the Gallic spoils filled Rome's coffers and funded Caesar's future political ambitions. Furthermore, his meticulous dispatches from the front lines, known as Commentarii de Bello Gallico, served both as a military log and a potent propaganda tool, helping him maintain and enhance his influence back home in Rome. However, the Gallic Wars did more than just expand territories and enrich Caesar. They showcased his qualities as a military commander, leader, and strategist. His audacity, decisiveness, and adaptability in the face of adversity became the stuff of legends. His strategic and tactical innovations, such as the extensive use of fortifications and field battles, changed the face of warfare. As the dust settled on the Gallic Wars, Julius Caesar stood as the master of Gaul and the hero of Rome. However, his rising power and popularity were viewed with increasing apprehension by the Senate in Rome. Little did they know, Caesar's triumphant return to Rome would usher in a new, tumultuous chapter in Roman history. But that's a story for our next chapter. Chapter 6. The First Triumvirate. In the tumultuous political landscape of Rome, One's ascendancy to power was often dictated by alliances. For Julius Caesar, the formation of the First Triumvirate, an informal political alliance with Pompey the Great and Marcus Licinius Crassus, was a strategic move that would significantly influence his political trajectory. This chapter delves into the formation, workings, and dissolution of this famous alliance that played a critical role in Caesar's ultimate rise to power. The year was 60 BC and Rome was a bubbling cauldron of political machinations. Julius Caesar, 
fresh from his exploits in Spain, had returned to Rome with a burgeoning reputation and ambition to match. However, his pathway to power was littered with obstacles, not least of which was the conservative faction of the Senate, known as the Optimates. Led by men like Cato the Younger, the Optimates opposed Caesar's populist policies and blocked his initiatives at every turn. It was in this challenging environment that Caesar saw the potential in forming an alliance with Pompey and Crassus, two of the most influential figures of the time. Nius Pompeius Magnus, known as Pompey the Great, was a distinguished military leader whose exploits had earned him great fame and respect. Marcus Licinius Crassus, on the other hand, was known for his enormous wealth, which he often used to sway political events. Each member of this alliance brought something unique to the table. Caesar had the popular support of the people and the political acumen. Pompey provided military strength and prestige, while Crassus provided financial resources. Together, they formed a formidable force that would be able to challenge and circumvent the Senate's opposition. The triumvirate was not an official political office but a private agreement, further emphasizing the personal nature of Roman politics during this period. To strengthen this alliance, Caesar offered his daughter Julia in marriage to Pompey. This strategic move turned a political alliance into a family bond, solidifying Pompey's loyalty to the triumvirate. With the combined strength of the triumvirate, Caesar managed to secure the governorship of Gaul at the end of his consulship in 59 BC. This position not only provided him with military command over legions but also access to untold wealth and a proving ground to demonstrate his military capabilities. In Rome, Crassus and Pompey managed the home front, navigating the treacherous waters of Roman politics. However, the triumvirate was not without its internal conflicts. Despite their common interest in countering the Optimates, personal rivalries and differing ambitions often led to tensions. The death of Crassus in 53 BC and Julia in 54 BC marked the beginning of the end for the triumvirate. With Crassus gone, the balance within the triumvirate was upset. Julia's death dissolved the family ties between Caesar and Pompey, leaving them to their growing rivalry. In the end, the power struggle between Pompey, now aligning himself with the Optimates, and Caesar led to a civil war that marked the end of the Roman Republic and the rise of Caesar as a dictator. In many ways, the first triumvirate was a platform for Caesar. It enabled him to surmount the opposition in the Senate, achieve great military victories in Gaul, and accumulate the power and resources needed to seize control of Rome. However, it also sowed the seeds of his eventual conflict with Pompey and the Senate. As this chapter closes, we are left with a sense of anticipation for the impending conflict that would shake the very foundations of Rome. Chapter 7 Crossing the Rubicon In the sweeping saga of Julius Caesar's life, one event stands out for its sheer symbolic and historical weight, the crossing of the Rubicon. This single act transformed Rome from a republic into an empire and marked the point of no return for Caesar, leading him to become the dictator of Rome. In this chapter, we delve into the events leading up to this moment, the civil war that ensued, and its profound implications for Caesar and Rome. The phrase crossing the Rubicon has become a common idiom indicating a step that irrevocably commits a person to a given course of action. This originated from Caesar's decision in 49 BC to cross the Rubicon River, a boundary that separated his province of Gaul from Italy. Roman law stipulated that no general could cross this boundary with an army, and doing so was considered an act of treason, an open declaration of war against the Republic. The tension leading up to this event had been years in the making. The demise of the first triumvirate, exacerbated by the deaths of Crassus and Julia, set the stage for an inevitable power struggle between Caesar and Pompey. The Senate, feeling threatened by Caesar's increasing power and popularity, demanded he disband his army and return to Rome as a private citizen. Caesar, realizing this would leave him vulnerable to his political enemies, declined. Instead, he made the fateful decision to cross the Rubicon with his army, uttering the famous phrase Alia Iacta est or the die is cast. With this, the Roman civil war ignited. The conservative senators in Pompey, blindsided by Caesar's audacious move, fled from Rome to Greece. Caesar, seizing this opportunity, 
marched his army into Rome and declared himself as the city's sole ruler. However, this was only the beginning of his fight for control. Pompey, despite being forced out of Rome, had not given up. He gathered his forces in Greece and prepared for war. The ensuing conflict saw Caesar display his tactical brilliance once again. Despite often being outnumbered, Caesar's forces won a series of critical victories. The decisive Battle of Pharsalus in 48 BC, where Caesar's forces decisively defeated Pompey's larger army, marked a turning point. Pompey fled to Egypt, where he was assassinated. Caesar, upon arriving in Egypt, aligned himself with Cleopatra and secured Egypt as an ally. Over the next few years, Caesar continued to consolidate his power. By 46 BC, he was declared dictator perpetuo, dictator in perpetuity, signifying the end of the Roman Republic. Caesar implemented a series of reforms, ranging from the calendar system to social and governmental reforms. He centralized the bureaucratic system and initiated large-scale building projects. He was, in all senses, the unchallenged ruler of Rome. However, his complete control and disregard for traditional republican values made him many enemies. This growing discontent culminated in his assassination on the Ides of March, 44 BC, marking an ironic end to a man who had crossed a river to seize power. The crossing of the Rubicon was more than just a military maneuver, it was a symbol of Caesar's audacity, determination, and sheer force of will. By crossing this insignificant river in northern Italy, Caesar set in motion a series of events that would see him become the most powerful man in Rome, transform the Republic into an empire, and forever change the course of history. As we turn to the final chapters of his life, we reflect on the enduring legacy of this moment and its profound impact on the man and the world he lived in. Chapter 8 Caesar the Dictator, Dictatorship, Reforms, and Legacy Julius Caesar's rise to power culminated with him becoming dictator perpetuo, dictator in perpetuity. An unprecedented title in Roman history, this marked the end of the Roman Republic, paving the way for the empire. This chapter delves deeper into Caesar's time as a dictator, discussing his leadership style, his ambitious reforms, and the ways in which he manipulated the political landscape to maintain his control over Rome. When Caesar emerged victorious from the Civil War, he found himself at the helm of a vast and diverse state that was deeply fractured from years of internal strife. His first task as a ruler was to reunite Rome, pacify the provinces, and restore stability. To achieve this, Caesar adopted a leadership style that blended autocracy with populism. He showed a firm hand when necessary, particularly in dealing with his opponents, yet also strived to win the public's goodwill through various measures that addressed their needs and grievances. Caesar's rule witnessed a slew of reforms aimed at overhauling the Roman state, its bureaucracy, and society. His economic measures included debt restructuring to alleviate the financial crisis that had gripped Rome. Recognizing the unsustainable nature of the public grain dole, he instituted regulations to curb its misuse and reduce the number of recipients. These measures significantly eased the burden on the state treasury and increased efficiency. Recognizing the need for a more accurate calendar, Caesar introduced the Julian calendar in 46 BC. With a year length of 365.25 days, it was far more accurate than the lunar calendar that preceded it and is the precursor to the Gregorian calendar used in the Western world today. In governance, Caesar worked to reduce the corruption that had infested the Republic. He reorganized local governments in the provinces, giving them a degree of autonomy, and set limits on provincial governors' terms to prevent the abuse of power. Caesar also expanded the Senate, filling it with his loyalists, but also including representatives from outside Italy, thus diversifying its composition. Furthermore, Caesar was a patron of architecture and public works, initiating grand construction projects to beautify Rome and to serve as a testament to its glory under his rule. The Julian Forum, named after himself, was one of the most magnificent of these constructions. However, Caesar's rule was not without controversy. His centralization of power, the dictatorial authority, and his evident aspirations towards monarchy were deeply unsettling for many Romans, especially the conservative elite. 
The fact that he had his face minted on coins, an honor typically reserved for deities, further incensed his critics. These actions were seen as a significant departure from Roman Republican values and fueled the growing resentment against him. Despite the controversy and opposition, Caesar remained undeterred. He was a visionary who sought to bring Rome out of its internal strife and into a new era of prosperity and unity. Yet, this same determination and disregard for tradition would prove to be his downfall. The final years of Caesar's rule were marked by increasing political tension, culminating in the notorious assassination on the Ides of March, 44 BC, which will be the focus of the following chapter. In conclusion, Caesar's reign as a dictator was a transformative period for Rome. His leadership style, his comprehensive reforms, and his strategic manipulation of political power were instrumental in shaping Rome's transition from a republic to an empire. Despite his eventual downfall, Julius Caesar's legacy endures, marking him as one of history's most influential figures. Chapter 9 Love and Relationships Caesar's Personal Life while Julius Caesar's political life and military conquests are often at the forefront of discussions about him, his personal life was equally intriguing. Caesar had several significant relationships throughout his life, each of which had profound implications on his rule and the political landscape of Rome. This chapter will delve into Caesar's personal relationships, most notably his famous affair with Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. Born into the patrician Julian clan, Caesar's first significant relationship was his marriage to Cornelia, the daughter of a powerful ally, Cinna. Despite facing pressure from the dictator Sulla to divorce Cornelia, Caesar refused, displaying an early streak of defiance that would become a hallmark of his career. They had a daughter, Julia, who would later become a crucial figure in Roman politics. Cornelia's death in 69 BC deeply affected Caesar, who went on to marry Pompeia and later Calpurnia. Caesar's marriages, while significant, often took a back seat to his political ambitions. However, his relationship with Cleopatra was a departure from this pattern. The liaison with the Egyptian queen was not merely a romantic affair, it was an alliance that had far-reaching political implications. Caesar and Cleopatra likely met during his campaign in Egypt after Pompey's death. Cleopatra, who was embroiled in a civil war against her brother, sought Caesar's support to regain her throne. Their alliance was initially political Caesar needed Egypt's wealth to settle his debts, and Cleopatra needed Rome's military might to secure her rule. However, their relationship soon evolved into a romantic affair that resulted in a son, Caesarion. Cleopatra's visit to Rome in 46 BC, where she stayed in Caesar's villa, caused a scandal among the Roman elite, not only for its violation of Roman marriage norms but also for the perceived threat to Rome's independence. This relationship dramatically influenced Caesar's rule. It opened the wealth of Egypt to him, bolstering his political and military campaigns. Cleopatra's influence also saw him adopting more monarch-like trappings, further alienating the Roman aristocracy. Beyond his romantic relationships, Caesar had several important friendships and alliances, most notably the triumvirate with Pompey and Crassus. He also had a close relationship with Mark Antony, who would play a significant role in the events following Caesar's assassination. In conclusion, Julius Caesar's personal relationships played a significant role in his rule. They influenced his political decisions, shaped his public image, and had repercussions on the broader political landscape of Rome. His affair with Cleopatra, in particular, stands as one of the most iconic relationships in history, symbolizing the merging of two great powers and reflecting the complex interplay between love and politics. As we delve into the final chapters of Caesar's life, these relationships, particularly those forged in the crucible of power, will play a crucial role in shaping the legacy of Caesar. Chapter 10 The Assassination of Julius Caesar Julius Caesar's assassination, one of history's most notorious betrayals, marked a seismic shift in Rome's political landscape. His death was not just the fall of a dictator but also a poignant symbol of power's ephemerality and the lengths to which men would go to preserve their republic. This chapter delves into the details of the conspiracy to assassinate Caesar, the events leading to the Ides of March in 44 BC, 
and the immediate fallout of his tragic end. At the heart of the conspiracy were Senators Brutus and Cassius, both of whom had personal and political motivations. Brutus, the son of Caesar's former lover and a dear friend to Caesar himself, was torn between his friendship and his staunch belief in the Republic's ideals. Cassius, known for his manipulative nature and staunch Republican views, masterfully exploited Brutus' internal conflict and convinced him of Caesar's alleged monarchical ambitions. The conspirators, calling themselves the Liberators, also included senators like Casca, Decimus, and Cena. This group was a volatile mix of Caesar's political adversaries and friends who felt sidelined by his rise to perpetual dictatorship. The plot was shrouded in secrecy and intricate planning. Caesar had become wary of threats, but his faith in his invulnerability and the loyalty of those around him made him dismiss the signs. The famous prophetic warning from the soothsayer to beware the Ides of March, and his wife Calpurnia's ominous dream the night before, failed to deter him. The morning of March 15, 44 BC, saw Caesar heading to the Senate, despite Calpurnia's pleas. He was due to leave for a military campaign in Parthia, and the Senate meeting seemed routine. The Senate convened at the Theater of Pompey, and as Caesar took his seat, the conspirators made their move. Casca was the first to strike, stabbing Caesar in the neck. The others quickly followed, each delivering a blow. Caesar fought back initially, but when he saw Brutus among the attackers, he reportedly uttered the infamous words, E.T. 2, Brute. His resistance crumbled at the sight of his friend's betrayal, and he finally fell, his life brutally extinguished under the statue of his former ally, Pompey. Caesar's assassination plunged Rome into chaos. The conspirators had expected their deed to be hailed as the liberation of the Republic. Instead, they faced an outraged public and a power vacuum. Caesar had been popular among Rome's plebeians due to his reforms, and his death sparked their fury. His loyal veteran soldiers, too, were seeking vengeance. Into this chaos stepped Mark Antony, Caesar's loyal ally, and Octavian, his adopted heir. They rallied the public and Caesar's troops, condemning the liberators and eventually sparking another civil war. The conspirators' vision of a restored republic crumbled, and Rome instead found itself on the path towards an empire. Julius Caesar's assassination is an unforgettable testament to the volatile interplay between personal relationships and political power. The tragic end of this brilliant strategist and formidable leader highlighted the precarious nature of power and the inherent dangers of ambition. The man who had once held Rome in his grasp fell to the combined blows of those who had once called him a friend, a powerful reminder of the fragility of trust within the realm of politics. Chapter 11 Legacy and Impact, Caesar's Footprints on the Sands of Time Julius Caesar's death marked not an end, but the inception of an enduring legacy that would shape the course of history. This chapter delves into the power vacuum following his assassination, the struggle for supremacy that ensued, and the lasting ramifications of Caesar's life on Rome and the wider world. In the direct aftermath of Caesar's assassination, Rome was plunged into a tumultuous state of uncertainty and chaos. The conspirators had hoped to restore the Republic with their drastic act, but this notion swiftly proved to be a mirage. Caesar's death had created a void that set off a fierce struggle for power among several ambitious contenders. Mark Antony, a loyal friend and ally of Caesar, was initially at the helm. Leveraging his position as consul and his close association with Caesar, Antony skillfully turned public sentiment against the conspirators. His heartfelt eulogy at Caesar's funeral, immortalized in Shakespeare's Friends, Romans, Countrymen, Lend Me Your Ears, roused the citizens into a riotous frenzy against the assassins. However, Antony's control was challenged by the return of Octavian, Caesar's adopted heir. Though only 18, Octavian exhibited an exceptional political acumen. His shrewd alliance with Antony and Lepidus, forming the Second Triumvirate, led to a brutal purge of the conspirators and effectively divided the Roman territories among them. Yet, this alliance was fraught with tension and eventually disintegrated, culminating in a final power struggle between Octavian and Antony. The decisive Battle of Actium saw Octavian triumphant, marking an epical moment in Roman history. 
Octavian's victory heralded the advent of the Roman Empire and saw him ascend as its first emperor, taking the name Augustus. This shift from republic to empire can be seen as the fulfillment of Caesar's vision, a confirmation of the autocratic tendencies he had set in motion. Caesar's legacy extended beyond the frontiers of Rome and his lifetime. His military strategies became a blueprint for future military leaders. His literary works, most notably the commentaries on the Gallic War, continue to be studied for their invaluable insights into Roman military and political affairs. Furthermore, his life served as a stark lesson for subsequent rulers, exemplifying the precarious balance of power and ambition. Caesar's story, imbued with drama, intrigue, and tragedy, has inspired an abundance of literature, art, and cinema, perpetuating his influence on culture. In terms of administrative reform, his introduction of the Julian calendar showcased his scientific acumen and administrative prowess. This solar-based calendar, with some modifications, is the Gregorian calendar we use today. On a grander scale, Caesar's life and rule significantly impacted the course of Western civilization. His expansionist policies, conquests, and reforms catalyzed the Romanization of Europe, influencing its languages, culture, and governance. In conclusion, the footprints of Julius Caesar remain etched into the sands of time. From his humble beginnings to his tragic end, his life continues to captivate us, his achievements stand testament to his greatness, and his legacy lives on, shaping our understanding of history. Julius Caesar was more than a historical figure, he was a force of change, a catalyst that propelled Rome and the world into a new era. His life was, in his own words, a testament to the idea of Veni, Vidi, Vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. Conclusion The unconquerable spirit, Julius Caesar, the mastermind of an empire. As we traverse the final chapter of this narrative, we stand at the edge of a monumental life story, the tale of a man who defied destiny and rewrote history. This reflective conclusion paints a comprehensive picture of Julius Caesar's life, his crucial role in the fall of the Roman Republic, the birth of the Roman Empire, and ultimately his place as the mastermind behind one of the most powerful empires that the world has ever known. Born into a noble, patrician family that had seen better days, Julius Caesar's story was one of stratospheric ascent from relative obscurity to immortal renown. His early years were punctuated by hardships, personal losses, and political turmoil, all of which served to temper his character and steal his resolve. His rise to prominence was not a straight and comfortable path, but a journey littered with obstacles that he overcame through a combination of sheer tenacity, astute strategic thinking, and an unyielding ambition to lead Rome to unprecedented greatness. Throughout his political career, Caesar displayed a stunning aptitude for forming alliances that would amplify his influence and expedite his rise to power. The formation of the First Triumvirate was a testament to his political savvy, setting the stage for his meteoric rise to power. His victories in Gaul displayed his military genius, while his innovative strategies and leadership skills won him the unwavering loyalty of his legions. However, it was his crossing of the Rubicon, in defiance of the Roman Senate's explicit commands, that marked the beginning of the end for the Roman Republic. This act, though branded as treason, was emblematic of his fearless pursuit of power. It sparked the civil war that would fracture Rome and culminate in Caesar's ascension as the perpetual dictator, thus signaling the death knell for the Republic. As dictator, Caesar proved to be a reformist leader, implementing measures that stabilized the Roman state, expanded its territories, and improved the lives of its citizens. His reign, though brief, was transformative, leaving an indelible mark on Roman society and setting the foundation for the forthcoming empire. His death, a gruesome affair orchestrated by those closest to him, marked a tragic end to his personal ambitions. Yet, in an ironic twist of fate, his assassination would catalyze the very transformation he had envisioned, the metamorphosis of the Roman state from a republic to an empire. The power vacuum following his death ignited a ruthless struggle for power, ultimately leading to the ascension of his adopted heir, Octavian, as Augustus, the first Roman emperor. The impact of Julius Caesar, both in life and death, resonated far beyond the boundaries of Rome.
his military campaigns dramatically reshaped the geographic and cultural landscape of Europe. His administrative reforms and public works laid the foundation for a more unified and organized Roman state. Moreover, his life story has served as a source of fascination and a subject of study for centuries, inspiring countless interpretations in literature, art, and academia. Upon reflecting on Caesar's life, we recognize a man defined by his unwavering resolve, his audacious ambition, and his exceptional strategic acumen. His life is a testament to his belief in his destiny, a destiny that led him to rule Rome, ignite the downfall of a republic, and sow the seeds of an empire. Julius Caesar, through his actions, his triumphs, and his failures, became not just a participant, but a sculptor of history. To borrow his own words, Veni, Vidi, Vici, he came, he saw, and indeed, he conquered. Julius Caesar's spirit, his vision, and his legacy have traversed the sands of time, reminding us of the man who dreamt of an empire, the man who dared to reach for it, and the man who, despite falling short of his personal aspirations, set the course for the future of Rome. He came, he saw, and he left a world irrevocably transformed in his wake. As we draw the final strokes on the canvas of his life, we find a portrait of a man who was as much a product of his time as he was a catalyst for the age to come. The story of Julius Caesar is, ultimately, the story of a man who dared to dream, to act, and to conquer.